You see, when it comes to our prayer, when it comes to our prayer, there's a minimum that if you do it, your prayer is good enough. It may not be the best, but it's good. You, you met the minimum requirements, right? When it comes to fasting, there's a minimum requirement. If you met that requirement, your fasting is still good, right? Okay, so let's just say somebody fasted when while they were fasting, they read Quran the whole day, or they worshiped Allah the whole day. It's a pretty amazing fast, fast plus all that worship. And somebody else fasted, and the moment they, the fast started, they passed out, then they woke up, prayed, passed out again, woke up, prayed, passed out again, and then Maghrib came and they had a flower. They had a coma, coma fast, right? But did they meet the minimum requirements? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not Ihsan, it's not the best, but they still fasted. They met the minimum requirement. Somebody, you know, who made wudu, who, pr who faced the, the proper direction, who wore pure clothes and prayed their salah, they met the minimum requirements. Even if they were distracted in their prayer, even if it wasn't that great of a prayer, even if they maybe sometimes rushed a little bit, or chose to recite the shortest surahs they know just to get it over with, even if they did that, they at least still met, and I'm not recommending any of it, but technically, did they meet the minimum requirements? Yeah, you can't say they did something haram. Right? What I'm trying to say is, ihsan means, the word ihsan means you do something at the best you could do it. But if, if you don't do your best, that doesn't mean you failed. That doesn't mean you're in trouble. Like, it's like saying, if I don't get 100, I failed. No, I could, I could get an 85, I could still pass. A 70 still, I mean, 65 is passing in most schools now, right? So 60, okay, at least I still, it's a, it's a D, but it's not an F. It's not an F, so it's, I still move on to the next class. I, it's not the best score, but in the list of things that are haram, this is what I want you to visualize. When Allah makes a list of things that are haram, Allah is saying anybody who crosses this line has failed. Anybody who crosses this line is in trouble. And I would argue that in the Quran, when it comes to our parents, our parents are the only ones that if you don't do, if you do anything less than your best, that's haram. Because of this ayah. Because this ayah is about things that are what? Haram. It's a scary thing. That Allah didn't even expect ihsan in every prayer. He didn't expect ihsan in every dealing. He didn't. He didn't say it's haram for you to be short of ihsan. But in when it comes to parents, anything short of your very best is a violation. It's a violation. My job is to find out if I'm not, if I'm not doing something haram. It's about me before it's about anything else. When you start reading the Quran so you can find things to point at somebody else, that's, that's when your relationship with the Quran stops. That's when it stops. Because now you're using this book to point fingers at who does what wrong. And I no longer look at myself. I no longer see this as a book that's talking about me. I see this as a book that's talking about everybody else. Somebody came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Who deserves my best behavior? Who should I be the best to? He says, Your mother. The guy wants a different answer. So he says, And then who? And he says again, Your mother. And then who? And then your mother. And then who? And then your father. Their comfort should come before my comfort. Their needs should come before my needs. I shouldn't feel like I can just drink a glass of water while my mom is thirsty. That's not okay. That's my mom. She deserves ihsan. I will put, I will put my comfort second, I'll put my parents' comfort first. Well, because that's, that's the least I can do. I, that even that won't even compare to what she did for me. And what my father did for me. I wouldn't be standing on my two feet if it wasn't for the two of them. Doesn't matter what I accomplish. And you know, sometimes the father is a farmer or a taxi driver, you know, or doesn't have, and, and the son is a PhD. So the son has accomplished a lot more than the father. But that PhD didn't come from the son. It came from the father's sweat, blood and tears. The father put you in this position. The father said, I'll give my son a better future than I could give myself. So no matter what I do for my father or my mother, will it never be enough? But in my religion, I am not a slave to my father I am a, or my mother. I'm a slave to Allah. And Allah made me responsible to take care of myself. He made me responsible to take care of my spouse, my children. He made me responsible to take care of zakat. He made me responsible to take care of fundamental things using my money. 
using my money. And when I'm taking care of those responsibilities, and then above and beyond that, there is a need that my parents have. There's a need that they have. Then before they even ask, I should be taking care of it. I should be taking care of that need before they even ask. You should know that your dad is in debt. You should know that there's a, you know, the car broke down. You should know. You should do something about it. If you, if you can do something about it, you do it. In another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, your children are gifts of Allah to you. He said to the people, your children are gifts of Allah to you. You can take from their money when you have need of them. When you have need of that money. So if my father needed money, it would be a shame that he wouldn't even, even have to ask. I would actually, I should be thinking about what he needs before he even has to say it. Because it would be embarrassing for him to have to ask his son or his daughter for money. It would be embarrassing. It would be embarrassing. I would, I would, you know, want to run into a wall, run my face into a wall if my mom came to me and said, can I borrow $20? Where, how oblivious have I been that I don't know what my mother needs? Right? That's a shame on me. And she knows that I have and I, I just didn't care to ask or I didn't care to take care of it. Right? So there are, on the one hand, if you're able to, take care of all of their needs. Put a smile on their face. If you can give them gifts, give them gifts before they even have to ask. But if your parents are asking for things that are not needed and they're putting you in difficulty, and they're taking money that is, is the right of someone else. It's the right of your children's education. And now you're compromising your kid's education because they want to get a newer car. They oh, it's only a 2016, we need a 2021. That's a luxury. And that education is, a, you know, is a more of a responsibility. You, you and I need to have the sense to know which rights and responsibilities come first. But that, on that day when all of that stuff is happening, Allah says, you'll think about all the things you put in front and all the things you put in the back. But it also means other things. It means you will realize and I will realize on that day what was more important and what was less important. Obviously the things you put in front are more important to you, right? And I gotta do that first because that's more important to me. I care about that more right now. And the thing that you wanna, that you put later is not as big of a priority. It's not as important to you. So this statement is also about a person will wake up on that day and realize what are the things that they lived, their life showed what was more important and their life showed to them what was less important. What was more important and what was less important. What should they think about? What should they not think about? When they made a decision, you know, whenever we make a decision, there are things we think about, right? Let's take a simple example, like eating food, right? For a Muslim, we're going to think about is it halal or not, isn't it? You might think about other things. Is it healthy or not? Is it in line with my diet or not? Is it a good time to eat this or not? Is it expensive or not? Whatever, there are other factors. But the biggest factor for you and me is, is it permissible or not? Is it halal or not? Number one. But a person could say, well, you know, but it tastes really good. So the halal haram is a second thing. That became mu'akhar. And the taste became muqaddam. The taste became muqaddam. It could be that the health benefits of the food are not great. But the taste is amazing. So the taste became muqaddam and the health benefits or the health harms became muakhar. Right? That's that's what taqdeem and taqheed is. This is what I'm talking about here. What became more important? What became less important? But why is that question being asked on judgment day the moment a person comes out of their grave? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.